In this video, we're going to look at the 555 timer. I forgot to write 555 there. This is an old sheet. In fact, I made a mistake there. But in uh, any case, we're going to uh, wire it up in monostable mode. And what that means is the output is going to be low. The LED is going to be off until we press this button here. We'll give a low signal to pin number two, and then we will have a high output. The stable part though is when the output is low so when it's high that is not stable once we set the output high we'll start charging this capacitor the capacitor will be zero volts it will charge until it gets to two-thirds of the supply voltage and uh, doesn't matter what the supply voltage is it's gonna charge through a resistor the more voltage the quicker it's gonna charge but in any case we uh, set the time with a capacitor so we're going to use a 1000 microfarad capacitor helps make the math easy we'll basically get a time constant based on the resistor that we use and so one time constant is about how long it takes for a capacitor to charge to two-thirds so it's uh, going to take a little bit longer when we do the math but in any case one kilo ohm resistor it should charge to about two thirds in about one second, 10 kilo ohm in about 11 seconds. In any case, once it gets to two thirds of the supply voltage, then it is going to the 555 timer. It's actually going to discharge the capacitor, but also set the output low. The LED will turn off. So, on the uh, old diagram that I have here, you can kind of see the minus table there. You can see here that I have the pin layout. So, we have to power it. So positive side comes to pin number eight, right there. And then the negative side of the supply ground comes to pin number one, right there. Another thing I'm gonna note really quick, we have the discharge and the threshold tied together. I just have a little jumper right there. I think you can see it pretty well. And uh, that's as close as I can zoom where it will stay in focus. But in any case, we got those two tied together. That's where the capacitor will go and uh, so that's a uh, just discharge and threshold we'll talk to those about those later you can see reset right here goes to the positive rail that prevents it from doing anything it's waiting for a low signal almost a zero volts or close to zero volts and as long as it doesn't get that it doesn't do anything and that's what we want for this circuit so now we come back to uh, the schematic and the uh, pin number eight there, that is the supply pin. Pin number one, the other supply pin, the uh, negative side. Pin four, we got directly to the positive rail. I accidentally put five there, but cross it out, wrote four. Prevents it from doing anything. Now we have the uh, input to deal with. And so I have a switch up there. You can see that it goes to the negative rail right there. These switches, these uh, push button switches, usually go into the breadboard fairly easily. You have to make sure you put it in the right way. The wrong way, it's a little too narrow to uh, plug into the board. So that helps a lot. And then I usually put the lead straight across where I can plug a jumper on there. So the middle that doesn't have any connections comes to that part of the breadboard where we have that stop. So it's negative up here. I could move this over there. It would be exact same connection over there. These are connected on the top and on the bottom at all times. So I'm going to put this to pin number two, this jumper. I think you can probably see that. And so these white jumpers that I have, they, they work perfect for this. And it goes right to pin number two. So that will give us our low signal. Now, we don't want to leave the pin floating. So we're going to take a pull up resistor. It's going to pick up stray signals. This is going to act like a little antenna, go more positive, more negative, about 60 times a second. And uh, and if I press the board or something, I can give it stray signals with capacitive effect. So we want to make it definitely 5 volts. We can do that with a uh, 10,000 ohm resistor, 10 kilo ohm, exact value doesn't matter. 10 kilo ohm works pretty good though. Make sure we go to the positive rail. And we could just go directly down here. It doesn't matter. It's all one conductive area. But uh, that's a little more out of the way. So we have our input. So it is 5 volts until I press a button. Then it's 0 volts 
any energy that gets through that resistor just gets sucked right to ground. So it's as if it doesn't exist when we press the button. We will have a little current though flowing. The uh, input doesn't let current go in or out other than a little bit of leakage. But in uh, any case, for the most part, no current goes in or out. It just looks at the voltage. Now, we will come over and do the timing part of this. So, that's a pin 7, 6. We're going to use a resistor capacitor. I already mentioned the little jumper. So, you can see we got pin uh, 7 and 6 tied directly together. So, I'm going to start with a 1 kilo ohm resistor. 1,000 ohms, I think that's 1,000, and uh, that's going to go to the positive rail right there, and it could go to uh, pin 6, but I got it at pin 7. This is a little more of how you normally see it, and I'm going to take a 1,000 microfarad capacitor, so this is a timing part of the circuit. Let's see, 1,000 microfarad, we can charge it up to uh, 35 volts. We need to limit current to pin 7 because that connects directly to ground at times. So this is an electrolytic capacitor. We have to put it in the right way. That has to be more negative over there. So we put it there and then put that one up to pin number six, the threshold pin right there. So threshold pin monitors the uh, voltage of uh, the capacitor and uh, this point to the resistor now since we have a direct connection there. But it monitors the voltage. It's waiting for two thirds of the power supply voltage to uh, set the output uh, low and also to stop discharging the capacitor through the discharge pin, pin 7. The load, we're just going to use an LED. So since I put one kilo ohm resistor there, a red LED won't be very bright. And so I'm going to use a green LED. And uh, so I got this jumper to the negative rail right there. We gotta take the long lead, the anode. We got the short lead, the cathode. That's that dash. Also, there should be a shaved edge along here for the uh, cathode if you trim the lead. Not all LEDs though do. Some of them have a rim all the way around. Some of them shave the rim where the cathode is. So we have uh, that capacitor there. And uh, I think that was the one kilo ohm resistor for that I took. Nope. Okay, I got another one right here. So pretty straightforward. We just go to output, pin three, and then to the anode of the capacitor. Or did the LED, I mean. And uh resistor doesn't really want to go in. There we go. Not too bad. So I think that's it. I think that's everything. Let's grab the uh, power. I turned the uh, power off. So when I turn this on, the LED should stay off and uh, it does. Also it's not a bad idea to take a capacitor of uh, I think it can be any value this is a hundred uh, microfarad it's not a bad idea to put that to the uh, rail because if you bump this power supply this particular one you kinda change the voltage to the rail for just a split second fraction of a second and so it's not a bad idea to put a capacitor at the rail with the 555 timer but in any case output is on so I hit the button you can see the green LED lights up for about a second. And uh, I falsely triggered something. But uh, in case, the capacitor may have helped with that. We have about a second. That's with one kilo ohm. And so I'll pluck the uh, one kilo ohm. We'll grab a 10,000 ohm resistor. 10 kilo ohm. Nope, that's also a one kilo ohm. There we go. 10,000 ohms. So. That's going to go to the positive rail and then to the uh, capacitor right there. Now I hit the button. It's going to light up for about 10 seconds. And uh, so I'm not going to do this again because it's a long time to kill right there. It's going to be about 10 seconds, actually about 11 uh, seconds when you do the math. And uh, when you use the formula for the monostable 555 timer. So this is a 100 microfarad capacitor right there. So one tenth of the capacitance which means it will charge ten times faster and the LED will be lit for one tenth of the time. About ten. Ten point one seconds right there. So that's really it about it for the, the circuit. Now I added to uh, this diagram 
something that uh, might be a little helpful. So the stable condition for the monostable 555 timer. You can see here that uh, the output's low in the stable condition, which we can see the LED is off. And uh, so that's the stable position. The capacitor does not charge because the discharge pin is connected directly to ground right there. So we're going to move to the uh, next position and uh, I got to tilt the camera down. Got too much crap above above here. So we press the button you can see pulsed right there. We get uh, below one third of the supply voltage to the trigger pin. That sets the output high and at the same time it opens up a switch basically within the integrated circuit so that the capacitor does not discharge anymore and the uh, current going through there does not discharge. Now the capacitor charges and then it charges and charges until we get to this point here where the threshold pin notices it charged to two-thirds of the supply voltage. That's why the uh, high output is not stable because once we get to two-thirds of the uh, supply voltage charging the capacitor then it automatically discharges the capacitor at the same time setting the output low and uh, that's where it's going to hold again as long as the power supply voltage to uh, the trigger pin is above one third of the supply it's going to hold the output low so it's just waiting for that low trigger to start the whole process again so that's steady in any case uh, I'll pop up some other videos. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you click subscribe, like, and the bell. And uh, make sure you check out my other videos. And I will see you in the next video.